So the Wisconsin applicators were concerned because when the regulatory community would show up at a spill site, we were getting conflicting information. What do we do? Do we excavate out the road ditch? Do we flush water? How clean is clean? And so after doing a number of these demonstrations, we've really come up with some guidelines that we're using in the Midwest. And for a liquid manure to spill like we're talking about here, what we're shooting for is to recover 85 to 95 percent of the solids. What we found is that if we go in and excavate, we get bare soil, we're going to have an erosion problem. And long term, the environmental damage from an erosion problem in a road ditch might be much worse than the manure spill itself. So what we're really trying to do here today is demonstrate a couple of different ways that we can clean up an incident, contain it, but at the same time not create a greater problem down the road. So what I've got set up here is a couple of different things. First thing that I have here is a five gallon bucket with the bottom cut off of it. Okay? Now in certain parts of the Midwest, certain parts of Pennsylvania, we've got a lot of drain tile. And we've got a lot of surface inlets, and you see I've created a fake surface inlet here. We've had a number of cases where manure has gotten into drain tile and gone directly into a ditch. And obviously we're looking for a very easy way to keep that from happening. And so what we're going to be doing today is using this five gallon bucket. I've got some loose dirt around the base of this, and we're going to twist it into that loose dirt. Should provide a very nice seal, keep the majority of manure, if not all of it, from getting down into the drain tile. Now, one of the farms I was on in Minnesota, that particular farmer, every piece of equipment he had was green. And not just green, you could eat off of it anytime you wanted to. I don't think there was any dust or bird poop anywhere on his equipment. And we walked behind the manure pit, and there's an old, rusted, chisel plow. That struck me as odd. I said, why is that? So I asked the farmer and he said, well, you look about 600 feet beyond that pit, there's a drain tile inlet there. That goes about a quarter mile to that stream. That goes down into the reservoir for the municipality. We had a gopher hole where manure was coming out of that lagoon a few years ago. It almost made it to that drain tile inlet. I would have been on the 6 o'clock news. I went to get my chisel plow, which is another thing we do sometimes to work through uh, manure flowing away from a site. I couldn't get to it. My corn head was in the way. My bean head was in the way. I had my hay baler in there. We couldn't get to it. We almost lost it. He said that next Saturday, I went out, I bought a chisel plow. Didn't care what color, didn't care what condition, as long as it worked. And so I leave it parked by the side of the pit. It's there if we need it. The same thing, simple tools, like that five gallon bucket with the bottom cut off of it. Like something that you can throw in front of a culvert to block something from going through. In this case, I've just got a scrap piece of plywood. The other thing I've seen a number of folks use is a mud flap off of a truck, an old, worn, torn mud flap. One of the things we've used in Wisconsin is plastic from round bales. Dump a little sand. A number of things we can do. So what we're going to... Eakers. Okay. So one of the things we're going to be demonstrating, like I said, is blocking off this culvert. We then have another dam that's built here. And I've got a small sump. We've got a vacuum truck here from Lehman. They're going to demonstrate cleaning it up. Once we've made the releases, we've demonstrated the various ways to stop the flow. We're going to bring in the water truck. We're going to send a couple of pulses of water through this area to try to get the solids off of the soil, off of the vegetation. My rule of thumb is that for every gallon of manure spilled, I want three gallons of relatively clean water to flush off of here. Now, I've looked at this and I said, what can we do with things around the farm? 
That's why I've got the five gallon bucket, the scrap of plywood. And you'll notice that our water source is actually a manure tanker. It's not water I would drink, but it is a water source. It has a little bit of manure in it, but that's okay for this type of demonstration. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get things set up. I will be giving you the hand signal to start the flow here in a couple of minutes, and we'll get started. The, thing, the other thing I like to do is to stomp around the edge of this just to get good contact. We'll go ahead and let it rip. Please pay attention to the wind. Typically on a slope like this, I would see manure moving at about one foot a minute down the slope. Now as it comes here, I'm going to take the piece of plywood. I'm going to put this in front of the culvert itself. And the other thing I always do is scoop some loose dirt right in front of that so it doesn't fall over. As I said earlier, one of the things that I like to do is I like to have some plastic, like from some round bales. I can put that on there, can put some sand on, works very well. Now, one of the things that we've learned by trial and error is that in winter, this doesn't work as well. If I've got snow here, I may have ice. We've tried damming it off before. Manure's going underneath, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do another uh, release about the same size here. Once again, you'll notice how quickly the manure itself flowed. We've got some very nice velocity coming down here. Uh, we're almost up to the top of our uh, tile inlet here, and I'll scoop a little loose dirt away to get it flowing uh, from my culvert. And we'll go ahead and do another release. Now, we had this situation pre-planned. We had everything set up here. And one of the things you'll notice is the manure is almost around the edge of our dam, okay? This is real life. When we've done some of these demonstrations before, manure has gotten away from us. And so one of the things we always have to be prepared for is what we're gonna do. So in this case, I've got my initial dam with the culvert. I've got my backup dam here, just in case something does go wrong with that um, situation I've got. If I'm in a stream, what I like to do is create an initial dam. I then go upstream to keep any more clean water from coming in. I then go downstream and create a final dam. We've had several times where things have overtopped because of springs, because of drain tile, because of other situations. So having that backup in place is really important. Now, one of the things I often get asked is, well, should I actually call the agency and report a spill? And each state's going to be different in terms of their reporting requirements. The key thing I always look at is put yourself in the shoes of that agency person, okay? Let's say that they get a call from you. You say, I've got maybe 500 gallons. I've got it dammed up, we're cleaning it up, it's going to be fine. Now, when the citizen next door calls to complain, that agency person can look good. They can say, yeah, we know what's going on, it's being dealt with, and we're going to check on it. Now let's say the citizen calls first. Now the agency person kind of looks foolish because they don't know what's going on, and now they have to respond. 
for most states, if it's an accidental spill, you're not going to get hammered by the regulatory agency. If you kill fish, if you create damage, you're expected to repair what you damaged. But for the, the big take-home message with this today is it's not illegal to have an accidental spill. Failing to report it and leaving it like this for a week is going to get you in trouble. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to ask the vacuum truck folks to fire up. And you'll see that we're a little damp down there, but we did keep manure from getting down into that drain tile. With that, I'll open it up to any questions anybody may have uh, about spill response. I know there are several folks here from the regulatory agency. If any of them want to step forward and maybe say something about reporting requirements here in Pennsylvania, you're welcome to. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, please, if you have questions for him, I'll remind you. I handed out a bunch of these mirror hanger uh, gimmicks that we've made. Uh, we like to remind you of the steps of the spill response situation. We like to assure human safety, stop the flow at the source. He did that many times when he waved and stopped the tank, uh, the driver, and stopped the flow at the source. Not always that easy. Not always that easy, says Kevin. Control and contain the existing spill. Notify proper authorities, as he mentioned. Always a good idea to get them on board immediately. Then we clean up the existing spill. 